Real dollars are at stake on farms and ranches across Nebraska when it comes to trade and tariff issues. We caught up with Jay Rempe, the senior economist from Nebraska Farm Bureau, for more. Jay, when we talk about issues like trade, boy, there's no shortage of things to talk about given the tariff situations and all of that where producers, they've got some questions. Oh, they do. There's a lot of things happening in agriculture right now. The trade issue that you mentioned, Steve, farm programs, some of the new technologies that are being adopted on the farm. So we're trying to wrap that all together in one package for next week with our Ag Economic and Technology Summit in Kearney. And we're going to have a variety of speakers to give economic outlooks, talk about technology adoption on the farm and ranches. But, you know, baseball has their all-star break next week. So we're kind of thinking of this as our all-star break for agriculture in, in the state. It's a chance for everyone to get together, farmers and ranchers and others involved in agriculture, to talk about some of these important issues that are going on. You know, you've done some numbers crunching into kind of at the county by county, you know, kind of on a farm basis to understand what some of this means to us. And these are real dollars we're talking about affecting Nebraska farmers and ranchers. Oh, exactly. Uh, just here in Nebraska, if you look at what happened in June on corn and soybean prices and the drops that we've seen in prices, looking at last year's production, that's over a billion dollars lost in potential revenues to our farmers and ranchers. Well, that adds up. I mean, that's that's quite a bit of money. And I just seeing today the pork prices are off because some of the tariffs that are on China and Mexico put on pork exports. So those are real dollars that are being taken out of our farmers and, and livestock producers' pockets, and that, that hurts. And remind me, where do we stand on the tariffs? Which countries now have some tariffs levied, levied against us? Well, it, it pretty much all, if you look at our major markets in, in, this, uh, in this arena, uh, Japan, uh, Canada, Mexico, China, South Korea, and our three largest are Canada, Mexico, and China, and all three of those have tariffs that are on soybeans, corn, beef, pork, all the major exports that we do in Nebraska. The only two that right now do not are Japan and, and uh, South Korea. Certainly, you hope the president's end game is, you know, that this is going to result in some leverage that'll get us some better deals and all that. But you can understand why there's some apprehension right now. Yeah, I, I think that's part of the anxiety, Steve. Is uh, the president maybe hasn't outlined exactly what his agenda is and what his end game is, and so that leaves all of us guessing and wondering: Will there be an end to this? And we keep thinking that there will be an end at some point, and it never comes. Well, Jay, I'm planning to be there, too. Looks like some good information that uh, people can get. So thanks so much for joining us. You bet. Glad to do it, Steve. One lucky bison is currently living among humans, getting a chance at life, and will soon be reintroduced to the herd. NTV's Lauren Coomer recently went to the Crane Trust Nature Center. Here's more. Born almost six weeks ago, this baby bison calf was born as a twin, so the Crane Trust took her in to give her a chance at surviving. <laughs> Meet Patty. She's the youngin who's made a fenced in part of the crane trust her home away from the herd. She's curious. Um, she's very strong and, and, and stubborn. She doesn't want people to leave her. She always she wants to be around people all time or other animals. Um, that's why we did get her a, another little calf to be with. So and I think it's important for their their uh, their social state if we were to introduce her to the bison herd. Salter saying there's a possibility she could have survived if she kept up with the herd, but odds were slim and if they wouldn't have brought her in, she most likely would have been taken by a coyote. When uh, a bison mom has twins, she's going to abandon the one um, just because she can't keep track of it or she just doesn't have the resources to take care of both. Um, and that was the case here. We found uh, her on the pasture just by herself and we thought it was the best thing for her for us to, to, to intervene at that point. The bison herd actually living on the Crane Trust land, 108 of them including calves to be exact. Salter saying they're beneficial to other wildlife. Historically when there's millions of them you know crossing the prairie and eating all the grass and, and stomping um, and making bison wallows and all that it's it's making different habitats and ecosystems for, for native wildlife that, that needs that type of disturbance that the bison provide. The Crane Trust says they'll eventually wean Patty off the bottle to grass around three months. We'll try to bring in maybe a younger group of animals to see how they react to her and see if she bonds with them. The Crane Trust is hoping at around six months they can reintroduce her to the herd. Lauren Coomer, NTV News, Wood River. Will the heat continue? Regina has our grow weather outlook next. And then we kick off our county fair season right here from the Hall County Fair.